So we were talking about the fact that miracles and challenges have a relationship with each other. And we brought up another subject that has a relationship with miracles, and that is the idea of the reward for mitzvahs. And then we said, from a mystical perspective, the idea of the reward of a mitzvah is to draw down the light or the energy that is higher than hishtalshlus, higher than the chain of creation, into creation. And we started explaining to that. We started explaining that that the system of creation, the real limitations of creation begin uh, at the process of what's called symptom. Symptom is the contraction of that energy in order to be able to get one single line, what we refer to as the kav, one single ray of light to be able to descend into a, and create a limited space because now it's a single ray and now it's, it, is, it has been siphoned off, so to speak, from, from infinity. And that begins all of creation, and that ray of infinity itself becomes further and further diluted as we go down um, lower and lower into creation until we get to this point, you know, in, in our world right now, what we see around ourselves is not godliness, it's physicality, it's limitation, it's negativity even, it's things that are, are quite contrary to godliness, and the job that we have and what a mitzvah is all about is the idea of revealing uh, godliness in the world. Question. Yeah, just question. We're dealing with chapter three now, correct? We are um, currently on... on um, Two, three. We're, we're on the second page, of, second page of chapter two. The rabbi's going over what he went. Okay, okay, thank you. Memory. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, no problem. No, no, no problem. problem. Rabbi, can so I ask was, a question, or do you want to sure. just continue? Um, sure, go ahead. How, so what you're really talking about is a laser beam coming from Hashem. It's comparable to, but obviously it's not a laser itself. But, you know, I, I can see the comparison because the intensity right. of energy and light. So in terms of that, yes. It's, and it gets it's when it hits, from, when it comes to reality, it gets dissipated and dis, and completely messed up. No, it 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 first of all it creates reality okay. because it creates limitation. Okay. Okay. All right. And it dissipates within reality to the point where it is no longer uh, discernible as godliness. Okay. And that's the point, to be able to go lower and lower and lower, to be able to create creation that, that feels and exists as separate be beings. A person, of course, can go throughout their entire life thinking that God does not exist. And on the uh, of course, God is giving every moment, not just of life, but every single moment and every single detail of life. But it is possible for us to to forget that, and that's that's actually what we're focusing on over here, is that that descent of this energy is coming down to the point where it is completely concealed, and that's actually, and I, I'm sure we've mentioned this before, the word olam comes from the same word as helem, which means concealment, because the definition of a world is the concealment of godliness. Obviously, a higher world there is less concealment of godliness. In Atsilus, as we explained, the godliness there is overt, but it's limited. And so once you already create limitation, that's already not the same, quite the same thing as, as, God, as God is to, in himself, to himself. But there's also one other point that, 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 you, that you said that I want to clarify also. When we say the words that this beam or whatever it is is coming from God, so to speak, we have to clarify that there's nothing outside of God. And so all of creation is not something else because nothing can exist outside of God. This is just as God relates to creation. So yes, we use the term from God, so to speak, but it's not a separate idea. 
And it's very, very important to remember that concept. That, that's okay. I, not, you know, I did not, not understand that at all. I, that completely went over my head. Now I get what you're talking about totally. Great. Good. Miles all right. We're heading the right, <laughs> there we go. We're heading the right direction. Fantastic. So now we're going to start talking about the two, the two of as God relates the world. One is so and the other one is Vimale. So as we explained, is as God is beyond the world. You know, God is of course, you know, vastly greater in in you know in quality and and in any way possible. You can't define God as being relatable to the world. Um, at the same time, God creates the world, but He creates it in such a way that He that that he is transcendent. That's Sovev. Mimale, on the other end, is as God is absorbed into the world, into the details of every single micro detail within the world. God enlivens those details and makes sure that each detail has its own existence, has its own life, uh, has its own process in order to be able to deal with the world. And so that's really where we were. Um, and we started saying that that the Kav, let's see, hang on a second. Forget the Kav. Let's go back to the top of page 26. So this concept clarifies the difference between Mimale and Sovev as well. Mimale is a relative absorbable light, which can be divided into specifics. It is drawn down into each dimension and particular creation in accordance with the characteristics of the recipient. It unifies itself with every element of creation. Obviously, you know, just in the uh, the parking spot that I am sitting over here. Oop, hang on a second. But, you know, I've got I'm sitting here at Hallover Park, and you know, sitting at the ocean, there are creatures of all sorts of sorts of magnitude. At the same time, you know, right over here is a is a beach sand, and so when you Take the, mag the magnitude of a whale, let's say, and a tiny, tiny um, grain of sand. You know, the two of them really have no relativity one to the other. One is, of course, inanimate. And the other one is a massive creature and has an entire lifespan and does all sorts of things, interacts with other whales and, and does everything that it needs to do. So God gives both of them life, so to speak, that is relative to each one of them. The sand of course, had been broken down from whatever it was, you know, many, many thousands of years ago or since the actual beginning of creation into the microscopic, you know, elements that make up its own structure. The whale, of course, everything that it comes from, where it comes from, all of that comes from God interacting with his world in such a way that the world is absorbing God's existence so that it exists. So, so back are, to the are... text. Go ahead. So are we considered uh, lights of Mamale? Mamale? We are we are not lights of Mimale. We are given life by Mimale. Our the vitality that we feel, the energy that we feel, which is life, is given to us by God's energy, by um, by God's uh, element of, of Mimale. But I, I thought we're considered beings of light enclosed in a body so what is our the, life? The, the soul well there are there are again once you get into our the soul, soul there are different aspects right there are different aspects of the soul and so what we're talking about right now is as we are within the body living our lives doing basic stuff we're not talking about as we are an actual a an actual part of god himself that is a much, much, much higher um, element of existence. And that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is as, as we are beings. Okay? Okay. So do we contain both, both aspects? Absolutely. Absolutely. One's in a revealed way and one is in a concealed way. We're in a revealed way. We are human beings living in a physical world. Right. In a concealed way, we are a godly being. And there's, there's differences as well we'll get into in terms of, of 
of how that's kind of felt or experienced um, after we finish this this chapter. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to break it down at least the way I, I understand it. So based on that, it is self-understood that Mimale involves itself with each infinite detail. We can also therefore understand that Mimale is only a revelation, not an actual luminary, because as the Baal Shem Tov said, essence cannot be divided. And Mimale adapts itself to every dimension accordingly. So what we're saying here is that, you know, a, a luminary, of course, gives off light in an automatic way. The sun, for example, does not concern itself with giving energy to a particular blade of grass. It just doesn't care. <laughs> you know, the, it's not as if the sun has feelings or anything like that. But conceptually, we're not talking about something that is trying to focus on something to be able to give it its, its, uh, its energy to be able to grow. The sun is a luminary. It gives. That's what it does. Mimale is a light in terms of its a dissension from the luminary. It comes from the luminary. And so therefore, because it comes from the luminary, it, it aims its, a, itself or, or it focuses itself in each detail in accordance with that detail's needs. Sovev, on the other end, back to the text, is an encompassing light in its essence. And anyway, sorry, just to go back for a second. We said that the Baal said that essence cannot be divided. Because the definition of something that is essence is something that is beyond the, the individual capacity. Our life essence is not concerned with whether or not we like we. We're, whether or not we like pizza. Our life's essence is not concerned with even, you know, deeper details of life. It's, it is a, it's an encapsulation of life itself. And because it's something so deep, it cannot be defined per se. Yeah. I'm, I'm... As soon as you define it, you're already limiting it. So essence cannot be divided. Something that is, that is of the essence something that is the deepest idea of essence is something that is deep within and is no longer definable. So can we use the word ethereal? If that is there, yes. but you, it has no limits. Yes. Ethereal, yes. it's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So babe, on the other end is an encompassing light in its essence, meaning that it cannot reach into or identify with specific details and characteristics, not upper and lower, not breadth and width, etc. And we're, like we said before, breadth and width, we're not just talking about the physical aspects of breadth and width and upper and lower. We're talking about the spiritual ideas in terms of descending and ascending spiritually, in terms of different sides, aspects of things. Like we said, chesed is on the right side, vura is on the left side. In other words, there's a there's breadth and width, width in Judaism as in, in, in spirituality as well. They're concepts. They're not, they're not um, just just uh, physical manifestations. Therefore, even as Soviv is drawn into the worlds and enlivens the worlds, it remains aloof and beyond. Its impact remains concealed as any limited dimensions cannot handle Soviv's intensity. And this is the important reason why. They cannot reconcile themselves they cannot recognize, reconcile their own individual existence with the transcendence of Soviv. And just to continue where it clarifies itself, this is despite the fact that Soviv creates the worlds, but its vivifying nature is hidden. If the energy of Soviv were to be revealed, creation as a separate entity could no longer exist. It would become totally nullified. The purpose of creation, of course, is for creation to be limited do have limits, and yet to be able to recognize God's existence. If we were to obviously, overtly be able to perceive God's existence, we could no longer feel separate because we truly are not separate than God. We're not separate from God. We're created, every element of ourselves is created by God at every moment. And so therefore, 
if we recognized that, we would just be basically stunned. We would no longer be capable of, of, of truly existing. And in a very, very small way, you can think of, of, of you know, let's say you have a, you know, a, a small time musician who meets, you know, the greatest musician in the world. And the greatest musician in the world starts playing something. The small time musician is typically going to be in so much awe of the fact that this great musician is playing and so focused on what this guy's doing that he will not necessarily be able to even function himself. And, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that's an element of nullification that he recognizes the greatness of what's going on. And, you know, he, he doesn't feel capable of being able to join it from his own level. And, and, this is obviously what we're talking about here is in a far, far, far greater manner. But the concept is the same, this idea of nullification. Here, it's because of intensity. A better, better example is the example of a single ray within the sun's entire being. And this is a concept we're going to discuss in the next mimer. Um, but it's worthwhile to talk about here because in the mimer we're going to talk, next mimer we're also going to explore Sovev and Mamale once again, if I remember correctly. The idea that a single ray inside the sun's vastness exists, but you can't discern it from anything else because within the, the sun's own intensity, it doesn't have a separate existence. It is, it is absorbed within the entirety of everything. And so that's similar to what the way we would feel if Soviet were to be revealed within our world. We could not exist outside of it and as, as a separate being. So now we go back to Mamale. And again, we're just contract, uh, contrasting the two of them. But Mamale, being that is relative to the world, can even be revealed within the world even in our corporeal world. And that's life. Life itself comes from a male. And he points out the fact that physical creatures do not recognize it is only because they simply do not know that their vitalizing force is godly. They understand that they are alive. They feel their own existence and recognize that it is the result of some vitalizing force, but they do not connect the dots to recognize that the force that gives them life is God. And that's, that is Mimale. So it doesn't seem very exciting because it's nature. Oh, sorry, it's hard to see when someone comes. Sorry about the delay there. It's boring. It doesn't stick out. It's life. It's nature. And that's exactly what Mamale is supposed to do. It's supposed to match the recipient. It's supposed to match the worldly existence in such a way that you don't see anything else. And so the Rebbe concludes, since the godly vitalizing force is revealed and obvious, and it's only due to the crassness of physicality that is not recognized as godly, it is self-understood that through the process of spiritual refinement, one can get to the point that the truth is evident, that all of creation is vitalized through God. <clears throat> this is a verse that comes from, uh, from Halal that we say, Emet Hashem Leolam Haleluka. So the way it's typically translated is, Emet Hashem Leolam, that the truth of God is forever. But here we're translating it very literally. We're saying that the truth of God, the truth of God's existence is in the world. So, but that can only be when a person considers this and thinks about it and, 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 and tries to, to feel it. And of course, that's part of the process of prayer. And that's part of the process of, of acknowledging um, godliness, of, of recognizing godliness, of recognizing and, and thanking God, you know, as much as we can. All of those things bring us to, to a greater recognition that you're able to see things as they are. 
finish the, uh, the, cha the, the chapter and then I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of this. You know, per personal example, but just want to finish the paragraph first. The truth is this already happened once. Prior to the sin of the tree of knowledge, the Medras tells us that Adam had all of creation declaring, let us prostrate ourselves to God, our creator. All of creation was nullified to the en energy of Memale. In other words, prostrate ourselves to God, our creator. Their recognition that God is our creation, our creator, and that we are God's creation is itself all of creation being nullified to the recognize to, 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 to God's existence. The same could, could be possible now, as Mamala is still revealed within our world, but creatures mistakenly attribute this energy, or excuse me, mistakenly attribute this energy to nature. Sovev, however, cannot be revealed in the world, as we have stated, because its intensity would cause all of existence to dissolve out of their separateness. So, the reason why this, this mimer is, 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 and we're going to continue, of course, um, but it's, it's very personal to me is because of, of my youngest son, uh, I, I mentioned, I think, has, uh, has complex cardiac disease. And without getting into all the details, but when he was born, he had three of the 12 heart defects that are considered critical. And there was a doctor that blocked us from getting medical care for five days. Um, the three of those, those three defects are that he only has a single ventricle, which is uh, a significant problem, but of course it's solvable by a series of, of surgeries. The other two problems were bigger problems in that they were um, pulmonary atresia and total anomalous pulmonary venous return. What those two are is basically there was no possibility for blood flow between his heart and lungs. Pulmonary atresia is that there was no valve in his heart. And total anomalous pulmonary venous return is that the veins that carry blood from the lungs to the heart were, went to the wrong place. They went into the liver instead of the heart. So practically speaking, he had no system through which to breathe. He was not... The only medication that he was given as soon as he was born was a medicine called prostaglandin, and that was to keep a small hole between the heart and lungs open, and that hole is called the ductus arteriosus. It usually closes immediately after birth, and that was the only system through which he could actually shuttle blood back and forth. Despite that, he survived without being on oxygen without any medical care whatsoever, he was born Monday. So all of uh, is born at 1245 on, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we finally got him back to a different hospital, children's hospital, and they put him in the ICU. So all those days, there was no physical way for him to actually be able to survive. So this is actually the very definition of a miracle. <laughs> You know, we have a system where obviously I mean, we're talking about the doctors themselves and the surgeons themselves said that there was no system. So it's not something that a rabbi is saying, but the surgeons went in there, pulled out the heart and were like, you know, there was no way for this to be able to happen. So that's the very, very definition of a of a miracle. And we're going to talk about the fact that what that does is it causes uh, the purpose of a miracle is that it causes a recognition of God's creation of in, within the world. And for me, you know, this was, this was an academic and a, you know, a matter of belief, of course, prior to my son being born and going through this entire process and everything like that. Um, but what the miracle did was, for me, it drew down this idea of the emet Hashem le'olam, the truth of God's existence, in other words, the absolute element of it, even though I had, you know, if you want to call it absolute faith beforehand, but that absolute faith was, was something that was, you know, that I thought about and considered and, and, you know, assessed and analyzed and all that kind of thing throughout, throughout my life. And, you know, as an adult, you think about these things and, and you try to come to an understanding of it. But when you go through a medical experience like this, where you're able to recognize um, that 
your life truly is only in God's hands, you're able to appreciate everything from a completely different perspective. And so then nature itself is recognized as a godly experience, as being enlivened by God. And that's a little bit of where we're going in terms of being able to contrast these two, that Memale is as nature is, and we can we try to recognize that nature is godly, is truly God's energy allowing nature to exist, allowing nature to function. What a miracle is, is a revelation of Sovev in which the systems don't need to work. Where God says, I'm going to cause this to exist even if it shouldn't even if everything's lined up against it even if there's no capacity to be able to have oxygen saturations because the heart and lungs don't have the proper mechanics together and that's what we're going to see there so the comparison that we're going to see in the next chapter is the concept of the reward of mitzvahs being so big the idea of a mitzvah is to draw down God's will and wisdom into the world. God's existence, of course, and God's wisdom is completely beyond the world. God's will, God's desire is completely beyond the world. But when we do a mitzvah, we're able to draw it down into our world and we're able to take something very, very physical and make that very, very godly because of the fact that we're doing what God wants with this particular object. The difference is right now we can't perceive it as a godly existence unless we truly, truly, truly refine ourselves. So the difference between us and you know the greatest of the, the spiritual greats, the greatest of the spiritual greats are we're able to to bring themselves to be able to recognize the godliness of every single mitzvah, and so therefore the intensity of every single mitzvah has a completely different level. Um, you know, the Alter Rebbe, for example, during prayer would oftentimes just faint from ecstasy. Um, it, you know, there's, there are many stories of, of these greatest of rabbis who were, you know, when they were doing a mitzvah, it was so intensely powerful that it, it affected their physical being. And that's because of their recognition of the spiritual greatness of it and their awe of it their you know their their own transcendence as a result of that for ourselves we can get little 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 glimpses and those little glimpses are you know in a moment of spirituality but i even even besides for the moments of spirituality i think most of us you know you walk into shul on shabbos and you feel a certain way but you feel very different on Rosh Hashanah. It's a, it, there's a different feeling. And yes, the songs are different. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a melancholic feel to it and everything like that. But the energy of the day is different. And if you tune yourself into that, you feel that energy. And the same thing with regards to other mitzvot. You know, our job is to, to do the mitzvah number one but also to try to attune ourselves to raise our spiritual awareness to be able to have an idea of what the mitzvah is accomplishing and to be able to feel a little bit of that godliness, just a little, little drop for a fraction of a second, a fraction of a moment. That's, that's what the purpose of repetition, doing it again and again. I put on tefillin yesterday, put on tefillin today, but tomorrow I hope when I put it on, I'll be connected to the idea. I'll feel the this this idea so but when mashiach comes we'll be able to truly truly absorb it right now it's transcendent we can get little 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 touches we can get little teases of of those feelings but when mashiach comes we'll be able to actually be able to absorb it so that's where, where we're going in in this whole process any questions before i hand it over to rabbi smith no all right. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Have a good trip. Have a safe trip. Thank you. Have a safe trip. We'll see you on Friday. Yep. All right. Bye.